Well, welcome everyone. Uh, thank you very much for coming this afternoon as we celebrate the uh, construction of the Computational Research and Theory Facility. Uh, the weather today, I think, is appropriate for the occasion. It's a little bit cool and cloudy, which is perfect weather for cooling a supercomputer. Um, which will be one of the things uh, housing, housed in this building. I'm Kathy Yellick. I'm the Associate Laboratory Director for Computing Sciences here at Berkeley Lab, and I'll be your MC for the afternoon. Um, we're delighted today be, to be joined by Tom Bates from the city of Berkeley, California. Thanks, Tom, for joining us. We're also very honored to have um, representatives from our federal, state, and local government officials here to mark the exciting occasion. Um, please hold your applause. I'm going to um, uh, introduce a number of them. So John Murray from the office of uh, Diane Feinstein, Senator Diane Feinstein, Jennifer Tang, and Josh Quigley from the office of Senator Boxer, uh, Barb Johnson and Latresa Alford from the office of Representative Miller, um, and Brian Hooker from the Office of, Office of Rep Representative Garamendi. Please join me in welcoming them and demonstrating our gratitude for their ongoing support. Uh, special recognition goes to the elected officials and their representatives whose districts include the lab and the, and the CRT building and their dedication to the lab for their strong support of science and their innov and innovation, innovative development. Um, Colin Ford and Ann Taylor from the Office of Representative Lee. Um, Mark Checklebane from the Office of Assemblyman, uh, Assemblymember Skinner. And Nathan Ballard from the Office of Senator uh, Lonnie Hancock. Welcome. Thank you very much for coming. I'd also like to offer special appreciation to several local people. Andre Richards, uh, the Berkeley Site Office Site Manager, um, along with um, Kim Abbott and Kathy Janescu, who have been um, instrumental in getting this project underway, and the um, uh, people who are not uh, the Office of Advanced Scientific Computing Research at the Department of Energy, Dan Hitchcock, and Yukiko Sekini, who is here with us today. Um, this project was really the vision of two people who were in the uh, management of computing sciences at the time, H Horst Simon and Michael Banda. Um, Horst Simon is now the deputy director of Berkeley Lab, and Michael Banda is the deputy director of the Advanced Light Source. In addition to them, I would like to thank Howard Walter, Jerry O'Hearn, Henry Martinez, and Jeff Blair, and many other people at Berkeley Lab, the DOE, and the University of California Office of the President that have helped move the CRT project forward from an idea to an actual construction project. We are very grateful to all of you. And now it's my pleasure to introduce our first speaker, Berkeley Labs Director, Paul Alavisados. Thank you, Kathy. And this is really a very exciting day and one that has been quite a long time coming. And uh, we're just thrilled uh, to be able today uh, to uh, be breaking ground on the CRT building. Uh, when we think about uh, the future of this laboratory and how the laboratory can contribute uh, to the well-being of the nation, uh, we know that computing is going to be an absolutely key component, and it's becoming uh, every day more and more of an essential part of every kind of science that we do here at the lab. And uh, for many years, the uh, computing building has been, our, our computing activities have been in Oakland in a very nice facility there. Uh, but it, they, uh, scientists and engineers and uh, all the uh, researchers who are involved in our computing efforts have been far away from the rest of the scientists here at the laboratory. And as you know, we're trying very hard to reduce the number of uh, sites that the laboratory is located in from about eight presently, uh, hopefully in the not too distant future, to just two. And so bringing the computing activities back to our home base here on the Hill is a tremendously important activity for us. It will allow our scientists to concentrate their skills and to have all of the natural interactions that occur when one person uh, runs into and talks to another and has the opportunity to share ideas. The CRT building is going to be a very special building for computing. Uh, it, it will uh, be uh, <coughs> a lead gold building. It will have um, uh, the ability to, as Kathy mentioned, to uh, use the uh, naturally cool air that occurs most of the year in Berkeley to cool the building. Uh, so it, it, it will also have the capacity in future, if needed, to cool with liquid if the technology should change in that direction. But, but at the beginning, it will cool simply with air. 
Um, and uh, it also will have, it'd be a quite large building, and um, it's been uh, organized in such a way that it will have the capacity ultimately to fit as many as two exascale computers should you want to send them to us, Bill. <laughs> so in the future, it's got a lot of capacity there uh, for, for us to go with for many, um, for a few decades to come. And uh, so we're absolutely thrilled. And um, one thing which I think is quite special today is um, that um, we're very, very fortunate to have um, the moving force behind this building. As you know, when, 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 uh, when Steve Chu was here as the laboratory director, uh, all kinds of special things happened here at this lab. He brought an incredible spirit of excitement and uh, engagement, and he reset the course of this laboratory uh, in a dramatic way. And uh, one of the many projects that he had going uh, when he was here as laboratory director was to lay the foundations for one day having uh, this, uh, this great computing building here. And so uh, I'm especially pleased that um, Secretary Chu could be here today uh, for our groundbreaking. Secretary Chu. Thank you, Paul. Um, it is a special thrill to see first all of you here, um, lots of friends I see in the audience, uh, but also to take part in this groundbreaking. Uh, the Computational Research Building is very representative of what we have that's best in the United States in research, in innovation. Uh, computation has played an incredible role in pushing back the frontiers of science, but further than that, it I see in the future as being a key element in helping uh, further the innovation and the industrial competitiveness of the United States. And as uh, if those of you have listened to the State of the Union address, uh, I did, uh, <laughs> um, uh, where the President laid out a blueprint uh, for America, a blueprint where he said, okay, for the future, not only today's jobs, tomorrow's jobs, but for a long time in the future, uh, science, technology, innovation will become a, a, is going to be a key part of this. Things like the computer research uh, building, the CRT building, uh, is going to be very much a key part. I was taking part of a, uh, an event uh, held in the Claremont Hotel of National Labs interacting with industry, and uh, there's going to be another one on computation specifically, but uh, computation played a large element in the discussions today and yesterday and what role it can play in in the simulations straddled with the new measurement tools we have uh, and better understandings of inventing new materials, inventing new processes, inventing new ways of approaching uh, the way we make things, the way we understand things. And so it's a thrill to be here. Um, I'm reminded of, uh, yes, it's a long gestation period. I, I should also say that um, um, in addition to all the people mentioned, I should, I should really want to point out the University of California um, uh, and the leadership in the University of California, uh, not only the present leadership here uh, and in the audience, but also uh, uh, Richard Blum, then the uh, head of the regents. Um, the, the willingness of the University of California to partner with the Department of Energy and Berkeley Lab uh, was also breaking new territory. And I'm very, very appreciative of the support uh, the university gave this project. So with that, I'll, I'll turn it over. I'm, I've been asked to introduce an old friend of mine. That is not to say he's old. We've just known each other a long time. <laughs> um, w when I was... Uh, I, as you know, I was a graduate student here and, and a member of the lab. I was a postdoc here and a member of the lab. Uh, they made me an assistant professor, but they allowed me to take a two-year leave of absence, so I took a leave of absence at Bell Laboratories. Uh, it turned out to be for 26 years, but who's counting? But um, my boss's boss, the, the director of uh, the area Bell Laboratories was hired into, was actually um, um, run by... Bill Brinkman. He also was a next door neighbor about eight houses down on the same block. And um, um, he and his wife were the babysitters of the first time for our first kid. And so that was also good. And that was a big joke at Bell Laboratories that he was doing it for the extra money. <laughs> <laughs> but with, I'll stop, Bill. <laughs> Thank you. 
Uh, I, I'm not sure how to counter that. I, I, I'm sitting here back here thinking, say, boy, I tell you, uh, uh, University of California had to go a long ways to have to ship Steve Chu off to Washington so they could get this building built. <laughs> Anyway, it was so nice to be here, and it's very, well, very wonderful uh, that uh, we're, that this building is being built. And it took a tremendous effort on the part of the management of the of university and the part of the management of the laboratory for it to happen. And that's 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 really great. And 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 it's it's directed at computing. And, and I, I must admit, I'm always astounded at the change that has occurred in the last 10 to 15 years in science and technology, and the importance that computing has has taken on over and over again. You, whether you're talking about astrophysics, where the where modeling explosions, the new supernova, where whether you're talking about uh, climate, whether you're, I was out at, uh, at, the, at the Joint Genome Institute yesterday, you talk about genomes, all of these things have massive computer problems. Even even material science has this thing called materials genomes today, which uh, in which we we actually are trying to use calculations to just predict properties of of, of materials and not have to. Then only after we've really found the right one, go out and try to make something. So there's a huge change in the whole attitude towards towards what we're developing here, and this this um, this particular facility will serve us very well. First of all, we have nurse here on campus. It's a very big operation for us, extremely important for the Department of Energy that we can get so many users, several thousand users, to, to use this facility every year. In addition, we, you run ESnet, which is our high, very high speed network that runs across the country. We're very proud of the fact that it now is actually using a 100 gigabit technology that uh, Actually came from the group I used to run <laughs> at, at, at Lucent Technologies, and uh, so it's it's very nice to um, see that that is happening and that we're that we're advancing the communication skills, in the business of, of of computing since since communication is playing such a pervasive role in in, in um, <laughs> as my phone starts vibrating in my pocket, <laughs> it uh, it is amazing. It's amazing to the extent to which which communications and cloud computing and those things are affecting our personal lives. Anyway, I want to congratulate everyone involved that um, that helped to, to get this together and to get this approved and get and get it started. Congratulations again. Uh, I don't know. Am I supposed to? You're doing it. Thank you very much. And um, you know, as as uh, Dr. Chu, Steve said a little while ago, um, this this project has really been um, backed by the University of California. It's a University of California project, and um, it really would not have happened without um, people who are willing to really stand up and push for this project at the university. So I'd like to introduce Mark Udoff, president of the University of California. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. And I'm also very pleased to be here at the Berkeley Lab. It's a very special occasion. It's always uh, special to uh, welcome back the secretary and uh, and Steve. You're welcome at any time to come back here, even for long periods of time, if you would like. <laughs> and it's a great honor to have him here with us. And uh, as has been said, the relationship between the University of California and the lab is critical. It's crucial, and it goes back uh, more than 80 years. And I think it's been an incredibly productive relationship. Uh, We've worked very closely together. Together, we've generated, uh, we have educated generations of scientists and facilitated the creation of knowledge. And I think it's fair to say that uh, the Berkeley campus and the lab have uh, transformed our understanding of the world in which we live. And today, researchers here at the lab, down the hill at the Berkeley campus and across the UC system, are working hard to address some of the great scientific challenges and technological challenges of our time. And when you think about the university and the lab, we're really in the same business. We first are the creators of knowledge. And frankly, the very few creators of knowledge in the world, they're the most valuable asset. And we do that through, through research. We educate the next gener generation of creators of knowledge through the teaching. And that teaching, whether it's in the lab or in the classroom, is absolutely crucial to the future. And then, of course, significant contributions are made to the public good, which in some ways is the ultimate test of whether the university and the lab have been successful. 
So the Berkeley Lab, in my judgment, sits at the nexus of all three missions of the University of California, and the CRT facility will continue that storied tradition, uh, particularly, as Bill was saying, as supercomputing becomes more and more critical to tackle the scientific challenges that lay before us. So the Berkeley Lab is a tremendous resource. I want you to all know that we appreciate the work that all of you do every day, and uh, we're honored to support you, and we're honored to support your mission. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Udoff. Um, many people have asked me why is the building placed right here um, on the hillside, and one of the most important reasons for the placement of the building is really its proximity to the Berkeley campus and all of the people on the Berkeley campus that um, we will and do do uh, collaborate with in the areas of computer science, mathematics, and all of the computational science disciplines across the Berkeley campus and across the lab. And uh, to say a little bit about the, the, the role in the uh, University of California at Berkeley, I'd like to introduce Robert Bergenau, the chancellor. Thank you. It's getting hard to say anything fresh, but <laughs> new. But obviously, this is a great moment, both for the laboratory, but as you've heard, also for the campus. Uh, this, as you also heard, uh, began as a dream by Horst Simon and Michael Vanda. I think we should congratulate both of them. For this. Uh, and I remember very early on when Steve uh, began as director of the lab and I began as uh, chancellor of the university, you know, one of the first things that Steve came to me about was uh, this facility and how important it would be and uh, how it would strengthen the partnership between uh, the university and the laboratory. I don't think either of us imagined at that time that it would be almost eight years later that we would be standing here. Uh, and we are only standing here because of Paul's unrelenting <laughs> uh, energy and the fact that he just was not going to let the neighbors beat him, basically, right? <laughs> and so, uh, and so uh, all of these people deserve incredible credit. Uh, you've all already heard, I mean, there, there's just, between the laboratory and the campus, uh, we just have incredible power. Uh, in the computational sciences, both applied and numerical analysis, et cetera, uh, and in fields like energy and global climate change, uh, biological and environmental research, astrophysical research, as you know, and in the fundamental theory of computing. And so uh, we, we uh, had a uh, site review, so to speak, by the Simons Foundation uh, and, and uh, uh, last week on about computational theory, and there was, of course, an important lab component, but the comments I enjoyed most came from the Vice Presidents for Research of uh, Google uh, and, and uh, Yahoo, both of whom said, basically, there's no place in the world other than the Bay Area where computational science is done seriously. So anyway, uh, I don't know if that impressed the, the Simons Foundation or not. I hope so. But, uh, but there is some truth, not complete truth, uh, having spent 25 years at MIT, but, but uh, this is a pretty extraordinary uh, place in the entire Bay Area, and this obviously this new facility will contribute to the strength of the Bay Area and the strength of the lab and, and the university. Uh, one thing that I th thought I might mention in terms of the educational impact is that uh, in 2008, the laboratory and the university joined together to create what's called Computational Science and Engineering at Berkeley. Uh, and this is a program which trains PhD students in the increasingly important fields of large-scale simulation and the analysis of large data sets. And the participating departments uh, are extraordinarily diverse. They include computer science, mathematics, chemistry, mechanical engineering, astronomy, neuroscience, and political science, uh, among others. And so the, just the, the reach of computational science uh, now, uh, as uh, uh, we've heard already from previous speakers, is extraordinary. So, this facility will just have a huge impact on both the lab and the campus and will be uh, an incredible resource for the lab scientists, for our faculty, and I think especially for our, our both graduate and undergraduate students. And so I want to uh, congratulate everyone sitting behind me for their efforts that has made this possible.
Well, thank you. As you've heard, the CRT building is going to bring together a diverse set of uh, scientists and engineers who are going to develop algorithms and software and tools to um, use the next generation of major computing systems. And um, they're going to help transform the way computation is used throughout the scientific fields across the lab and across the campus. Um, to quote Winston Churchill, um, we shape our buildings, and thereafter they shape us. Um, I think that this is uh, really going to be the case with the computational uh, research and theory facility. And in that spirit, um, I think we should move on to the next um, anticipated moment of the day. Just your shovels. Put over your shoulder. All right. There you go. Everybody look here. There we go. Good. Great. Excellent. Is this stage or what? All right. <laughs>